we talked about aperture and how you can set your aperture to whatever you want and then adjust your shutter speed and your ISO to get a good exposure. Now that raises the question, which was not answered, which was why would you choose one aperture over another, right? If I can get a good exposure with F2 and F22, what leads me to choose F22 over F2, F2 over F22? So this lecture is gonna look at that. We're also going to talk a little bit about what aperture literally physically is, which is important and how we measure it. So to talk about what aperture is, ugh, I have here um, ancient old man camera um, to show you how the camera is really a very simple thing. It is just a box with a hole in it, right? So this is a box, right? If you wanna look inside the box, you can see in there, no, no tiny people in there, just a box, empty. Um, and there's a hole in it, which is this lens. I can actually take that off. Ooh. Um, so that's your camera. Um, you're like, but Brad, that camera is very old. Surely my new camera is not the same. Well, I'm not gonna take my own DSLR open and poke around in it, but here is a, uh, camera and it is just a box, right? It's a, it's a smaller box than that other big one, but it's just a box and there's a hole in the front. If I lift up the mirror, your film or whatever recording material you were using would be in there, right? So again, just a box with a hole in it, boom. Um, we control exposure by seeing how big the hole is and how long we leave it open and how sensitive we are to the light that gets in. So how big the hole is is what we're dealing with today. That's aperture. How long we let the light in, that's shutter speed. How sensitive we are to the light that gets in, that's ISO. Um, so as we go forward in the Magic of Manual, we will deal with all of those things. Um, but let's go ahead and do it. Let us dive into Manual. I don't know if you can hear outside, uh, but they are grinding concrete away. So if you get some more atmosphere, that's what it is. What's up, Bronx? Okay, let's look at our cameras. Um, so here we have, and we do not need to see my head over there, right? Do we need to see my head? No, we do not. Let's uh, get rid of it. Poof. So here we are with, uh, oh, that didn't work. I'm sorry. I forgot that's the wrong spell. Uh, it's not poof. It's uh, puff. There we go. Um, so here we have uh, my DSLR. Um, and we're going to first go over here and we have been shooting in P for program mode. Um, we are going to now go over to M for manual. Manual is going to be where we will live for the rest of the semester. Um, manual is awesome and, uh, come on, get in focus manual, um, where uh, you should be. It is also, coincidentally, I had a great uncle, um, or maybe great-great-grandfather, I don't know, some relative named what I always thought was Manuel, but according to my parents, uh, his name was Manuel. True story. Uh, so I am here in Manuel, and that means that I can now change these little controls over here on my own, right? No input from that pesky uh, camera. It's not making any decisions about what I should see. It's letting me do it all myself. Um, so there are a couple of numbers here, right? Some of them are more obvious than others. Um, the one that I'm changing right now is my shutter speed. Um, comes in fractions of a second. That's 160th of a second. Not 160 seconds, 160th of a second over here. Oops, that's the same thing. Over here is my aperture. 
numbers going down, going up. I'll talk about what numbers mean what in a second. Down here at the bottom, there is my ISO. Right now it's at 1600, sure, why not? Um, and then the last little thing over there is uh, something that we are going to have set to auto. That is my white balance. Um, so you may not have this little thing on the top of the camera. You may need to look at it um, on the back of the camera. Um, either way you do it is totally fine. Um, so I would say feel free to find it out. Um, right? If I look at it on the back of my camera, there it is again. Uh, 1 160th of a second, F9. It's kind of an odd number. Let's put it at F8. Um, why is that an odd number? You'll see in a sec. Um, ISO 100. Uh, the nice thing about the back of the camera is it does show me my shutter speed as a fraction, which the top shows it only as a whole number, and I have to know that that's a fraction for it to make sense. Um, so what is aperture? Here is a old-timey lens. Um, I'm using this old-timey lens because uh, it allows me to show you aperture very easily. Um, you see that hole inside of this lens, right? I'm like, ooh, there's underneath it. Yeah. Um, you see that hole in that lens? That is my aperture. I can make it smaller and I can make it bigger, right? There's a maximum bigness it can make. <laughs> that, that were sentence. Uh, and there's also a maximum tininess that it can achieve. Um, so that is the aperture, the size of the opening that my light is coming through. Um, little teeny tiny one, big old flapping one. Um, so now we know what it is, right? Big hole and whoop, little hole. Um, how do we actually measure them? What do those numbers mean? So up here on the top of my camera lens, pardon me, um, we have some numbers. There is 5.6, 8, 11, 16, 22, 32, 45, 64. You are not going to have anything certainly higher than 32, 33. Um, you may very well have some numbers that go down below f5.6. It's going to depend on your lens. So each lens will have a different set of numbers um, or a different range of numbers, right? The numbers themselves, right? They'll always be like f8, f11, f16, f22. Um, but how much higher or lower they go than the one that this has on it, um, again, depends on your lens, right? Because this lens, right, there's a limit to how tiny of a hole and how big of a hole it can actually achieve. Um, so these numbers that I have on here, they're what's known as a full stop, meaning that if I go from F8 to F11, so F8 to F11, um, I made that hole slightly smaller. Um, this new opening, this F11 opening, lets in exactly half as much light as the F8 opening. If I go to F16, that lets in exactly half as much light as F11. If I go to F22, wait for it, that lets in exactly half as much light as F16 did. Um, same thing going the other way. If I go from f8 to f5.6, um, that new bigger opening lets in twice as much light at f5.6 as it did at f8. So moving up and down these full stops, you are cutting in half or doubling the amount of light that you are letting into your camera. Um, that's important to know because we will talk about um, stops. Uh, we'll talk about, you know, increasing your exposure of stop, decreasing your exposure of stop. Um, when we go into equivalent exposures a little bit later on, knowing how many stops one way or another something is, will be super important. Uh, these numbers, these somewhat arbitrary random numbers, um, you will just need to memorize them. Uh, so there is a uh, list of them on the website. Sit down, write them out on a piece of paper, and remember what they are. Um, they don't exactly double each one, but they kind of skip over, right? So 5.6 to 11 is kind of doubled. F11 to F22, that number kind of doubles, right? F8 
8 to 16 is kind of doubling. So they're sort of like skipping, like zoop, zoop. <laughs> you can't, me writing that uh, in the air is useless. Um, they are kind of uh, skipping over um, one number to the next. Um, I don't know, maybe that's useful to you, maybe it's not. <clears throat> Here, I'm gonna get a piece of paper and write it down. So if we look at them, right, uh, I'm gonna write down the whole uh, progression, turn off ah, that. Um, so if I start out 1.4, which we didn't see that on this lens, but it is out there, 1 1.4, 2.0, 2.8, 4, 5.6, 8, 11, 16, 22, um, and I'll just leave it there. Uh, remember, each lens is going to have a slightly different range on this scale. Um, this one that I have right here doesn't start until 5.6, but it goes a lot higher than 22. Um, other lenses, the one that I have here, goes 1.4 to 22, which is why I'm showing this one. Uh, it's kind of common for a um, like 50 millimeter lens. Um, all right, so uh, each one of these is doubling if I'm going down, doubling the amount of light going in, or having if I'm going the other way. Um, the numbers seem kind of random. You can, right, they're sort of numerically, if you want to try and remember them this way, um, numerically, right, 2, 4, 8, 16, 1.4, 2.8, 5.6, 11, 22. Um, so if that helps you remember them, that's great. If it doesn't, just wad that right up and uh, throw it out. Um, and don't worry about it and just memorize them. Um, okay, so there are our f-stops. They make the hole bigger or smaller. Um, we have our camera here. Um, with it, we can control shutter speed and also f-stop. <clears throat> You'll notice on the f-stop here that it has additional numbers, right? So remember on that big lens, we went 5.6, 8, 11, 16. Um, this one has some intermediate numbers, 16, 14, 13, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7.1, 6.3, 5.6, right? Like what, like 5.6 we recognize, 8 I recognize, what is this other shit in between? Um, so these are not full stop jumps. In these smaller increments, they are partial stops. So it's just a little bit more fine tuning. Um, when you were looking at your camera, probably it will be three jumps. So F5.6, click, 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 F8. Uh, so it's three steps to get a full stop. It's important that you know that, so check with your camera, um, set it to 5.6, see how many clicks it takes you to get to eight. Once you know that, again, it's probably three. Um, now you know if I wanna go up to 22, down to 16, uh, three clicks means I'm traveling a full stop. Now the F-stops, as we said, are going to be dependent on your lens. This lens, if I go down as far as I can, I'm at F4. If I go up as high as I can, that's F22. Um, so I can go a little bit lower than this lens did on the low side. I can't go as high as that lens did. Uh, remember, high number is going to be a teenier, tinier hole. Um, low number right there, big old low number, 5.6. 64, teeny tiny hole. Um, so if I switch lenses, now this lens, I'm at F22, 
I can go down, down, down. And remember my previous one, I would only go down to f4. This lens, I can go all the way down to 1.4, which remember I had on that piece of paper before I threw it away. Um, 1.4 is going to be sort of the low end of almost any, um, well, you're going to be hard pressed to find a lens that goes below 1.4. Um, you can tell what your lens's biggest opening, biggest hole is going to be. Remember, big hole, small number. Um, if you just look at the front, typically, of your lens, um, it will have something here It says 50 millimeter 1 colon 1.4. So that's telling me what my um, sort of biggest opening could be. It's 1.4. Um, so some of you may have a range there. If you have a zoom lens, a kit zoom lens, um, you may have a range that goes, let's say, um, 3.5 to 5.6. Um, that means that what the maximum aperture is is going to depend on where you are in your zoom range. Um, when you're zoomed all the way in, you'll be one thing. When you're zoomed all the way out, it will be something else. Um, so just keep that in mind. Make sure that you know what your maximum um, aperture, right? Remember, maximum aperture, biggest hole, um, is uh, that will be meaningful to you in sort of evaluating lenses, choosing other lenses, um, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that is my little bit on how um, how the lens uh, aperture thingy actually works physically, um, and next we will look at what it actually does to your picture um, besides possibly making it lighter and darker.